Sometimes I wonder just what we believe, who we believe, and what we have. The Bible said there's a pearl of great price hidden in the field. A man sold all that he had. And he purchased the field. Got it all, didn't he? I didn't get just a piece of this thing. People sit around the house of God and they act like they just got a little piece of it. A little piece of the cake. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Got it all. We ought to act like it, hadn't we? What did he tell them over there when the prodigal son came back to God? You pray this to me. Amen. He told him, he said, My son that was dead has to is alive again. Come, amen. Let's bring the fatted cave. He said, Let's slay and make merry. Amen. Put a party out there. But you know the best thing about it is, Brother Keith, the cave was already fatted. The son that came back didn't have to wait for two weeks for the cat to get cat to get fat. He was already waiting on it and ready. And then the servant, the son had been there for all. He ain't mad because he's having a party for the one to come back. He said, son, it's not yeah. all mine, mine. Everything I got yours. Yeah. Hey, he's yeah. here all the time. Yeah. He's going to have a party. Yeah. Any day you want it. Yeah. Any day you want it. Any day you want it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 You just say you want it. He ain't mad nothing to you. Yeah. I know people right now, amen, young people treat your spouse like a dog. Yeah. Yeah. And they continue doing that till praise God to have a breakup yeah. and face the boss. Yeah. Yeah. As a young man come to my house one evening, his wife was a leaving, hell was a breaking loose in her house. Hey man, let me tell you something. You go to lay it out on God, it's a coming. Yeah. You go to take it, hey man, backsliding on God, not taking it for the truth. It's a coming. Yeah. Hell's a coming to your house. Destruction's a coming. Right. You're going to find yourself shivering. Yeah. Come to my house of crying. Hey man, better lay it out of the house of God. First thing I ask you, hey man, I, hey, don't you wish you'd have been in the house of God? Can I get an amen? Yeah. Yeah. Say, pray, hey, I ain't the one to come to. If you need somebody to pass it by you, uh, yeah. hey man, don't blame everything on God. Uh, it's your fault, you to worship it this morning. Uh, it's your yeah. fault, you where you ought to be. Uh, yeah. It's your fault, you ain't read the word of God. Uh, it's your fault, you ain't prayed. It's your fault if you don't slide up to the table and eat because right. God's got it. Amen. It's for you and me. Yeah. I could have stayed at home this morning. I told my wife, I said, Maybe I'll just stay at the house. Amen. I wasn't on my sleep. Nerves in my back shooting down my knee, legs this morning. According to the, the, the therapist, that's a bad sign. I've done everything I could think of this morning to get the pain to go away. The only thing I thought about is coming to the house of God, and you know what? Hey, Matt's hurt till just then. Hey, it can hurt in a minute, but I'm going to praise Him. Hey, 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 I'm going to give Him honor and I'm going to give Him glory. Hey, we began to pray, amen. People need to change the way they play. They need to change their lifestyle. They need to change the way they talk. Quit cussing and go to praise Him. Get a call to tell. Quit lying and go to praise Him. Get a get an amen. Come on, praise God. Quit hiding under the shadows of this world. Amen. Praise God. So I got song because he lives. You know why these babies have got to change? 
You know why this young girl right here is going to change his life to have the best of life? It's because he lives. Amen. Amen. You won't find it in the world. You won't find it running with the world, talking Amen. with the world, dressing like the world, and looking like the world. You'll find it a praise and a risen Savior. Amen. You'll find it a loving God, and if you'll love God, you'll love your family. Yep. Can I get an amen? Come on now. Amen. If you'll love God and the things of God, you'll love coming to church. You'll love the Word of God. And praise God, it won't he won't take you all day to find a spot you can worship in because when it's when the reservoir is full, one drop from heaven, I, amen, it'll spill over on something. Can I get an amen? Somebody ought to know what that brings out. That little baby that was born, I, that God so fit to give you. I, the only way he's grown, the way he's grown, I, and looks the way he looks, I, it's because he lives. I, amen, he got this thing. I, can I get an amen? The first verse in the 23rd Psalm, never had it on my mind, had it on my mind for months. This is what he said. He said, The Lord is. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, the problem is people's got a God, but it ain't the God that I serve. Amen. It ain't the one I serve. I don't know who they pray to, Melissa. Praise God. They pray and 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 they say God ain't here in the left. That's a lie because the God I hear hears. Amen. Amen. The God I see and serve, Amen. He's got open ears. He said they already told him in the Lord of God. Now praise God. I don't know why it's coming. You might as well get a hold of this. I come to have church. Bless you. Amen. I come to have church. Amen. You know what he told him over in the book of Chronicles, Amen. He said, If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, repent of their sin. He said, Then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. He said, Then will my ear be attend to the prayer that's made in this place. You want your prayer nature, you have to live right. Amen. That's good preaching on the ear of the Amen. If your prayers ain't being answered, there's something wrong. And ain't nothing wrong with God. Amen. So I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, preacher. How about praying in the right way? Amen. How about getting in the Spirit? How about trusting? Amen. Unless I don't pray just to hear my head roll. Amen. I don't pray, amen, just in a, in a mist for my own lust, amen. I don't pray, amen, to prove points. I pray to see people delivered, amen. I ask God, amen, that something that will change your life. Not something that will hinder you, something that will change your life. Like I said, amen, at one time in my life, I tried to pray to God snuff these people out. Can I get an amen? And don't you think the God I serve could take His thumb and mash their nations and they not exist anymore. But you know what God gave me? A spirit of promise. A spirit of hope. And you know what on the inside of me? The old man of God began to see. He said the prayer of the amen is for Israel. It's all Israel would be saved. And I know and realize this morning when you get totally right with God, you'll quit the stuff that's not hindering you. Amen. 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 I'm going to hush. I don't know why people don't get stirred up. I don't see why things of life, I'm talking about this things that, hey man, you can't change, hinders you so bad. Amen. The other day, me and Jamie was fixing to put. Uh, Tail lights on my trailer, Jeff. Nothing is working. I'm just rewiring. It's cold, rainy. Jamie said, Come back at the morning. I said, Sure, we can. I was watching Jamie behind me, and he's a I thought he was saying everything is okay. And as many bits as I've knocked off of the trailers on that barn door, you'd have thought I'd remember. You see, that's the reason I unhook them from a truck, let the jack down, take the tractor, and lure them in. That's the reason I always done that. 
But this time, <laughs> oh yeah, I said, I'm backing up. <laughs> Christ! Jamie said, oh my God. said, you've torn the truth. You've torn up! I just died of life. He said, what's the matter with you? I said, you don't realize how many of them I broke. Can I get an amen? You don't realize how many times that I messed up, that I tore something up. But once you figure out that it is, hey, it's not important that God can fix it. Hey, man, you can laugh about it and go on. Say, so you've got it, God. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Call down the wheels and ask the woman down there if she had one. She said, Have you got yours off? And Jamie just not like it. He said, Yeah, I'm about 50 pieces. <laughs> so when we went down there, I just took her three or four pieces. <laughs> Couldn't tell nothing about it if I took it to her anyway. Hey, Amen. It's fixed. God's blessed. You know, I could have flew mad and beat the offenders off my truck. I used to pull that stuff. I could have done a whole lot of stuff, but it don't matter. Stuff like that just don't matter anymore. That's right. You know what's more important is people's lives that fell apart. Amen. Young people that's in distress and depressed so bad that they're thinking about suicide this morning. Amen. Not only thinking somebody's accomplishing <coughs> why we speak. Say, preacher, you're crazy. I don't you tell me I'm crazy. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm preaching. But yet we come into a house of worship and we just sit around. Huh? Come on, we just we, we can't worship. And you know why? Because there's something wrong with the spirit. There's something blocking the spirit in our life to keep it from moving and churning. Come on. We've got a hindrance. The Bible said, let us lay aside every sin and wait. So easy to set us and let us run. This race is patience. Come on, church. You know what I think this morning? I think we ought to just give us another song over it that comes on. I'm going to mind this good job. Why I ain't hurting down my hip, I'm just going to go ahead and walk up in the Amen. Amen. Talk and fix whatever's wrong in your life. We pray, but we don't trust. <coughs> Come on. We pray, but we don't believe. Amen. You know what? We lean on our own understanding. We lean on other people. We depend on people to tell us things. And the biggest majority of the people will go into the world and try to get consolation and try to get advice. I was reading this morning, hey amen, about 4 o'clock this morning, Jeff, about hey amen, not being unequally yoked in the world. Come on! How can people take advice from people who don't even know what God is? Amen. Huh? How can they help you? How can they give you any spiritual advice? And I can tell you something, people. Young people, let me give you some advice. You may be happily married and old lovey-dovey right now. But there'll be hard times coming. Amen. And when it comes, there'll always be some ungodly somebody <coughs> to try to pull you on apart. <laughs> First thing people do when they have problems, they separate and then they go, well, maybe I need a girl's sign out or a boy's sign out. And, and praise God, the first thing you know, Maybe you can help me see other people. I'll tell you straight up, you're a liar. That kind of advice comes from hell. Come on. I'm trying to help you this morning. Maybe if we can't get along, maybe I ought to go live over here and he can live over here. Yeah, go on. Open the door to the devil and let him in. You know what I believe? It's kept me and my wife together all these years for 35, it'll be 35 years in March. You know what I believe? Most of all, it's kept us together. I know God has since we got saved. But you know what I believe helped us more than anything? We was both so hard headed, we wasn't leaving. <laughs> Amen? 
Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. The people we live with this day in five or six. They got enough grit to stand up. Amen. Stand their ground. Come on. Huh? Bless him, Lord. We, I, I ain't gonna need preacher to stand in the pulpit and tell you that me and my wife has never had a short word. We've had a lot of shortens and a lot of long. <laughs> hey man, they have been many a weeks we didn't speak. Come on. But we never run off to mom and dad. Amen. I've been married almost 35 years, Sheila May. And do you know my mama passed away this year? Everybody knows it. And do you know I don't even know that my mama ever knew that me and my wife ever had a fight? Woo! Come on. Never knew. My daddy never knew. You see, one of your problems, I don't know where this is going, but I'm going to go ahead with it. One of your problems is is blabbing your problems all over everybody else. Everybody's got an opinion. I can tell you what they'll tell you. Why, if he's a treating you that way, there's more fish in the sea. I'd hunt me somebody that'd be good to you. After you figure out he ain't good to you, it ain't, it's too late then. Because the one that truly loves you is done gone. Amen. Too much water under the bridge. You say, people, God can take care of it and put it back together and restore it. But praise God, it's hard to fight to reprogram your memory. Can I get an amen? Every time you look around, you'll think about it. Can I get an amen? amen. Stubborn. I thank God for a stubborn woman. Thank God. Amen. She's got enough willpower to stand up. Amen. Come on and stay with me. Cut the runner off. <laughs> you know, I come down the road this morning, the sun is shining on my face. And the woman that I love sitting beside me, Amen. going to the house of God. <laughs> yeah. My oldest daughter, amen, nursing my grandbaby. Got two of my grandbabies with me this morning. They ain't no such thing as step grandchildren. Amen. Amen. They're not my step kids, grandkids. They're my grandkids. Whenever my my dad and my daughter got married and they started calling me Papa, you know what? That's my grandkid. Can I get an amen? Honey, that's the love of God. Somebody say amen. Oh, how blessed I am. What a family that I've got God to give me. Amen. That God's give me. You know what I found out? The hard times made it even better. We got close. Amen. There's two things when you have problems going to happen. You're either going to draw apart. You're going to fight through it and get that. When you come through it, you'll be stronger than you've ever been. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. And then when you can't bend over, amen, the one that loves you will bend down and put your socks on for you. Amen. 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 Come on. It's because they love you. When you get bad fast later on in life, amen, you can't change your own diaper. You love them. <coughs> Well, sit there and make sure you're pointing. Can I get an amen? Come on! Now praise God, that's love. Yeah. He said no greater love. A man lays life down. Yeah. Three springs. Get your song, but you know what I believe this morning, and this is what the Spirit of God is telling me. I come to the God I look at somebody here this morning. You've been fighting the battle and nobody else on the road. You're having trouble. Even if you fight. And oh my God, I ain't, I ain't a hit on the next time out here. This is what the Holy Ghost is 
Say, preacher, you, you've been in too many revivals. Now, maybe that's the problem. I ain't got to go. Amen. Maybe that's the problem. I ain't got to go. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you think you'll find comfort in the world, you're mistaken. If you think you'll find advice in the... In the sure. Don't you listen. I had no No. Jesus and He gladly 
set me free. close to God again. I'd give anything to have my family back. Amen. Amen. I'd give anything, amen. That's a, amen, that I had to throw it away. I hear them all the time say that. You know what? The only time you've got victory is when Jesus is calling you. Yes. Amen. Come on. When the Spirit say, come, come. Amen. Drink of the water of life. <coughs> Preacher, you don't know nothing. I don't know nothing, but I know a God and the Spirit of God knows something. Yes. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm not missing the mark this morning. I ain't missing it. I ain't missing it. You felt the Spirit of God. I ain't missing it. I ain't going to miss it now. Bless him, Lord. You know what's going to happen next week? You're going to find yourself, amen, there's a little old boy used to coon hunt with me. Used to be a little fellow. about this tall now. He was coming out of the mountain one time and he looked at his daddy and he said, Mama said, if you don't quit what you're doing, you're going to wake up cold and alone. Yes. Amen. And his mama meant it. You know what I don't want? I don't want to live on Fireview Church Road. Without my family in that house, you see, he'll just be an old hole. It won't be a it won't be a house without a family. Amen. 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 I don't want that, people. Amen. I'm going to live without my wife. She's my wife. That's mine, right there. That's mine, and I'm hers. So you act like it's a possession. It is. You know what she is? She's part of me. We're one flesh. 
Amen. That's what it takes. Anybody know what the book says? Amen. That's one flesh. That ring on her finger says she belongs to somebody. It's me. Whenever the prodigal son came back to the father, what did he do? He run, put his arms around him, put a coat on him. Hey man, put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. You know what that ring represented? Hey man, praise God, a covenant. Hey man, that we belong to Jesus. Can I get an amen? You see, that's mine. She's mine. She's mine. And I plan on keeping her. Come on. Won't stop quiet now, ain't it? I know it's going to come to this. But you know what I believe? I believe the devil's been a fight way before this morning. <laughs> so you just don't know, preacher. Yeah. No, you don't know. You don't know. You know. You have no idea what God knows. He knows everybody. He knows everybody. And this is what I've told people. Now you can get mad at me if you want to. But the most sickening thing I've ever heard anybody do is when they get out in public and bash their spouse. If you didn't like them no more than that, why'd you marry them? Amen. 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 Yeah. Matter of fact, I ain't got nothing, Josh, to say but good about my wife. And praise God, you ain't gonna say nothing bad about her in front of me, huh? Come on, can I get an amen? amen. That's love. Amen. And I'd be real disappointed if I heard her say some of the stuff that some women say about their husbands. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Oh, now look at them. If you're one of them, amen, man, and praise God is bad mouth your spouse, you need an altar this morning. Amen. Come on. Once I stood Listen. in the night clock, admit you. with my head bowed Listen, man. in the darkness as black I want you to listen this morning. And my heart felt alone, and I cried, Oh Lord, don't hide your face. They used to sing an old song in old churches around the country. It's not my brother, nor my sister, but it's me. Like a king, I may live in a palace. How does it quit? I don't understand. Can somebody help me understand? People that's been married for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. He come to me, Brian, and he said to him and his wife were separated. It was all her fault. And you know why it was all her fault? Because she asked him to clean up his act and quit drinking.
just clean up and she'd take him back. And this is what he said to me. Can you believe that woman? He said, I ain't even doing it. That's too much to ask. He said, let himself go. He, he just drunk all the time. And, hey man, just shabby, just dirty, never took a bath. Hey man, got to where he just didn't, didn't care how he looked. And all she asked him to do was shave, trim his beard up, clean up, hey man, and quit drinking, and come back home to her, hey man, and his child. And you know he said that was too much to ask for. He probably regretted coming to me. I said, are you crazy? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? It's your fault. You're the one that's given up your family and your life for the alcohol of this world. That demon in the bottle. Yes. And it don't have to be alcohol. It don't have to be drugs. It could be your own will. Yeah. You know what God, what they, what Christ called Peter over there when he said, Amen, yeah. that he wasn't going to let him die, Amen. Praise God, he'd go with him. He wasn't going to let him die. He said, Get behind me, Satan. Amen. Anytime you're looking for your own will and your own things, Amen, your own lust, Amen, you're just like a devil. It's a wrong spirit. Come on, man. It's going to be good. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. You know what I told him? I said, if my wife had left me, and she told me if I'd shave my head, my beard, hey man, you know what I'd do? I'd crawl on my bed. All the way to Horse Creek with my head and my beard shaved, and I'd go back home to my family. That's what I'd do. Amen. You see, you made a decision. You died without God, you died without his family. Now what will you decide to do this morning? You can say whatever you want to. God ain't missing nothing. We all have trouble. We all have problems. But you see, when you run to your friends in this world tonight, you know what they're going to tell you? Get rid of them. Let me introduce you to somebody. Amen? Scott, if she was me, you... I don't know, girl. Just put her out. Leave her. Amen? Just leave her. I know a girl. I can set you up. Sheila, Scotty ain't doing exactly what you want him to do. You and ain't getting along just the best that you've ever got along. Got along a lot better when you first got married. Put him out. I know a fella. Go to dinner. Go out and see him. Amen? Ain't going to hurt nothing to go out to dinner. That's the first step. Amen. Amen. But I want you to look at something. No, he ain't the same fellow he was when you married. You ain't the same girl that he married. Amen. But I want you to look back through the years. Amen. You remember early on in life when God sent you a young man? He's not a baby now. He's a grown man. Woo! Okay. Go on down through the years a little farther. He sent you another one. Yeah. Hey, not a baby, but a young man. Got on down the later years of life, getting right down to about where we're sitting on this old church pew not many years ago. They had another one born, hey man. Hey man, you walk on down through the corridors of life that you shared with this woman, hey man. Hey man, you know what God blessed you to see? He got to see that one saved. That one saved. What are you going to do? 
Don't give it up just because the devil said it's too hard. Got to have a little determination somewhere. You say, I done got two rocking chairs. I'm ready for mine to lend hers. She will at one day of coming to my life. And I'm going to sit down on my front porch. I love of my life. And I'm going to sit there one way in the evening in the back dark and I'm going to hold her hand. And I'm going to go back and reminisce with her. What we've come through. What God's done. And then kill it. Man, come on, people. What's the matter, you preachers? You don't know. I'm in love. I don't know about everybody here. They asked me down there at the drugstore what I was going to get Melinda for Valentine's Day. I said, she don't need a thing. She's got me. <laughs> She's in love. I said, I don't have to buy candy or flowers to prove that I'm in love. Amen. My wife's in love. She loves me and I love her. They looked at me like I was crazy. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on! See, it ain't about what you can buy. Maybe that's your problem. You've been trying to prove to them. You've tried to buy their love when you ought to prove it to them. You know when a, a woman, now listen, amen. Every, every woman in this, now you go, you girls, you should hold this. I'm not back in her, I'm going to have me a space. You don't do this. <laughs> Everyone that ever had a boyfriend, everyone that ever had a husband. You know what? When Valentine's Day, February 14th, it's Valentine's Day. They expect flowers. They expect they say they don't. But you'd be mad as a bull if somebody didn't tell you they loved you on Valentine's Day. Okay, I, I told her she's going to court. Amen. Hey, man. Hey, man, I thought I got off through another night of church. I told her, I said, you stole my valentine. <laughs> <laughs> he said, always been my valentine. <laughs> that sounds a little weird. Yeah. I love him. Huh? Come on. Valentine's Day is about loving. Can I get him there, man? Come on, people. Let's get in this thing. Jesus Christ is love. Amen. Come on. You know what your wife will appreciate more than anything? If you'll send her some roses on the 4th of July. If you'll send her roses, amen, in January. In February. Amen. Just put a note on it saying, praise God, I still love you. And I get an amen. Come on, praise God. Let them know you love them all year instead of one day. I always tell them, I don't want to always show but I love mine the way I do. And I didn't give it up. And I ain't giving her away either. Huh? She can do whatever she wants to, amen. I don't want her to be alone if I die a bit of joke. Amen. The only thing I ask her is not to marry a man with blue hair and do not let him down the bar to pet my horse. I told my kids, amen, if I die, uh, your mama married somebody with blue hair, fake hair. I don't care what color it is. Huh? Come on. You do something with these horses. Huh? Don't let him be riding my horse. I'll be gone. But I'm trying to save his life because the stay and I've got to leave him up. <laughs> Come on, I'm telling you the truth. I, I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to love him. I married her till death do us part. And I got news for you. Just because you feel like killing one another, that ain't going to excuse you. Amen. Amen. He said, death do you part. And praise God, you know what love is? It's when you're sitting there and your spouse is about to leave this world and they don't have to be afraid because a person that they spent their whole life with have got them by the hand amen. and you're walking with them. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Somebody better get a hold of this. Yeah. You may not have another chance. 
But you got another song. I believe people's a struggle. I believe there's a battle going on right here in this church this morning, and people won't admit it. The preacher I can handle it. They handled it so far. So you act like you know, I don't know nothing. That's the best part. I like to preach when I don't know nothing. Amen. Be damn happy for you. I just want you to know that. Amen. I'm happy for these young as they're going to get married. You know that? Sure, the whole world knows that by now. Sappy. Sappy, young love, sappy. Yeah. It's when, praise God, you've been with her for 35 years and you're still sappy. You know, I, I love Melinda. I love her more now than I did when I married her. And that's hard to believe. Hey man, I love her more now than I ever did when I married her. I didn't really know what love was. Can I get my man? Now somebody, we're going to have church. I don't care. With or without you, we're going to have church. I'm going to give you one more chance. And then we're going to go into Sunday school. We're going to do whatever God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. Come on. You won't be that kind of person that praise God you'll be there no matter what. You know, the Bible said that God's going together, let no man put asunder. He said, For this cause a man left his father and mother and cleaved and cleaved the wife, and they became one flesh. Amen. When she hurts, I hurt. Huh? She tell me what I'm thinking before I ever say anything. Huh? Come on. We'll go to eat some more. Go out and eat some more. We don't get to do that much anymore. But when we go, me and her both know exactly what the other one is thinking. It's crazy. It's like, it's like I don't know what. Hey, man. Mind reading. I don't know. Get your song. Once like a bird in prison, I dwell no freedom from my sorrow I fail. But Jesus came and listened to me and glory to God. He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Do you need to be set free? Do you need deliverance? Do you need help? Do you need some comfort this morning? Or maybe you just need some guidance. I'm saying your mind straight. Maybe you just need to talk to God. Maybe you just need to be like you need to come to the altar. Maybe you need to talk to God to draw in you. Maybe you just need to talk to Jesus. I'm going to hush. I'm going to hush. I feel better than I did when I left the house. I can tell you that. 
I for one am glad I've come to the house of God. Folks, this morning, let me tell you something. It ain't a shame to have trouble. It ain't a shame, amen, praise God, to have faults. You know what's a shame? It's when God brings deliverance, brother, that you won't accept what God's got for you. Now I'm going to hush, praise God. We'll go to Mitchell, you come on. I ain't going to apologize. Praise God, come on. I'm going to Are you okay? I'm going to go to school. We got any classes now. Yeah. Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. He walked not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But, there, but, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you... The body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But the Spirit of Him that dwell, but if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as much as are 
led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, I'll stop right there and, and, and uh, like I said, I know this is a familiar scripture, and I want to read this because uh, there's, there's several places in the Bible that talks about being carnal minded, and talks Mom. about uh, uh, the things of the flesh, talks about things of the world, and, and living after the world, and, and, and uh, they would hit just a little bit on it there Wednesday night about being carnally minded and, and, and things. And, and there's a reason people, uh, they, they, well, there's a lot of reasons uh, people don't live their life for God, but one of them is they are carnal minded. And one of the reasons you can't apply this book to your life is because you're carnal minded. And one reason you can't understand what the scriptures say enough to apply it to your life is because people are carnal minded. And, and, and this right here, I tell you, uh, the difference between being carnal minded and living after the Spirit and having the Spirit of God in your life uh, 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 is dangerous to be carnally minded. Man. But I want to I want to flip real quick, if you will, First Corinthians chapter two, and it'll go right along with it. We might flip back. We might. Not. I want to read that while it's fresh on your mind that. Uh, uh, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Uh, go ahead and find 1 Corinthians 2, I, verse 7, what I read in Romans says, Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That means that you're so carnal minded that you, you couldn't understand this, no matter what, no matter what. No matter if I stood up here and taught it, no matter how hard David preached it, uh, the carnal mind is enmity against God. I mean, it's just uh, at, at odds against the law of God. Your mind is at odds at odds with this book and with the Spirit of God because you've got it so polluted. Uh, let me just go ahead and read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1 says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor are the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God and the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For he hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we, but we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Even, even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye have believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I'll stop right there and I just want to point out real quick them last few verses right there. And you may say, well, I don't know whether I'm carnal minded or not. I try to read my Bible. I try to apply it to my life. I try to understand what they preaches. I try to understand what's taught in Sunday school. Uh, verse 3 says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? I, uh, I, 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 ain't gonna say, I mean, I ain't just going to say
going to uh, just say, uh, you know, just because of uh, exactly what it's uh, envy and strife and divisions, it, it's all these things. If you go back to Galatians 5 and read about the, the fruit of the Spirit and the, and the works of the flesh, this right here is listed. They, there's a problem. Uh, there's a problem when you sit in the church house Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and could not figure out whether you're spiritual or carnal. There's a problem when you sit in the church every Sunday after Sunday, Wednesdays and revivals, and you still... Uh, you, you, uh, I don't mean to hurt your feelings and whatsoever, but if you have to have a man of, uh, the man of God or whoever explain every single tit and title of this book to you, I've got to feel your carnal minded. Come on, Lord. You say, well, that hurts because I try to study my... Listen, I, I, I understand. And I, I, I have never in my life tried to... I hope I'll never come across as trying to be some great something because I promise you I am nothing uh, inside these walls or outside these walls. The one thing I've always been able to do is try my best to, to, to read and study and pray and have the Spirit of God reveal things unto me out of this book because I wanted to live it. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I, that verse 3 has been on my mind, uh, stuck out in my mind. It ain't necessarily been on my mind but ever since I've read this. For you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? I've said it several times in the past few Sundays. If you're coming up here for any other reason than to worship, you've got problems. Well, if you've come this morning for any other reason than to worship, you're carnal minded. If you were more worried about who you're going to get to sit with, who was wearing what, uh, who, who, who showed up this Sunday, if you're too busy about uh, your neighbor across the uh, church building that you're mad at, if you're too worried about all this, you are a carnal mind. Come on, man. And according to what I read over that, uh, it's serious for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Uh, yeah, uh, David preached as hard as he preached in a long time this morning. Uh, trying to get somebody to come up here and get some peace this morning. Uh, uh, there's a reason I guess people didn't move. Uh, uh, carnal minded is because if you want to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Um, I tell you, there's a whole lot right here in this book of Corinthians I just read. I mean a whole lot. And Paul is starting out saying he didn't know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That, 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 that's all he's told them. That he, that was just like I just told you about myself is what Paul said. He, he didn't know nothing, but he went on to read and, and tell them that we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world. It, uh, I, I think David Redder might have quoted it. If, if this gospel's hid, it's hidden to them that's lost. If, if, if you have problems applying this book to your life, every single... Uh, if you reach... If you've got a problem, if you've got a problem line, and you go and you look up every single scripture that tells you not to lie from cover to cover, and you go out tomorrow and you lie, you've got problems. Amen, man. Carnal minded. It's carnal minded. See, if you've got problems... Uh, uh, not. Let me just, just let's just flip over the book. I wasn't going to read, but believe me, we'll look at it. You ain't got to flip too far. Twenty eighth chapter. Let me just let me just. This might help. Come on, book of Acts in the twenty eighth chapter. Just a few verses. I ain't going to read it all. There's uh, towards the end over here. Uh, let me start at verse twenty four. Acts twenty eight twenty four. This might be good to mark this right here too. Acts 28 and 24 says that some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by his eyes, the prophet unto our Father, say, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reason among themselves. Now I'll stop right there. This is a, basically a saying. You've got eyes and you've got ears and you come every Sunday, every Wednesday, every revival, every chance you can get. You can go to every Bible study you want to go to just because you're there and you're hearing it. 
You ain't listening. And just because you can see things don't mean you are perceiving it. It's until... They, there's a reason people don't come to the altar when the invitation is given. It's because they don't want it. That's basically what it's saying right here. Uh, 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 for, their, for the heart of this people is wax gross. For their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed. Unless is what less means. When it says less, it says because less they should see with their ears, see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted. And I should and I should heal them. There's a reason people want to stay carnal minded because you have to fix things in your life. There's a, and I and I know this from personal experience. It's a lot easier to stay carnal minded because then you feel like you got an excuse. Amen. Well, I, I didn't understand it like that. I, I, I thought you could drink a beer. I didn't understand it like that. Amen. I, I, I thought you could shack up for a little while as long as you was planning to get married. I, I thought I, I thought you could smoke dope since God grown it. I didn't know. I never read it. When you got it, it, all these excuses, and, and then we're talking about the hidden mysteries and not seeing the things in the Bible. And, 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 and I ain't tell you. I'll promise you. I, I, I'll, I'll admit it for anybody. I do not understand everything you wrote in this book. And, 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 and he said you wouldn't understand it all, and that's fine. You you, you got to understand it for what you want to understand. And, and, and I, I've read it, and some things I just leave because I don't I don't understand it. I'll just go on. But the things that I that I, that I'm searching out, I'm looking for myself. God will give it to you. I promise you that. And you go to looking and the Spirit of God rested on you and, 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 and you're looking for it with the spiritual eyes and ears of your heart, God will give it to you. Uh, this carnal mindedness is dangerous. Amen. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, every church including this is full of it. You say, well, that ain't, that ain't very nice. It's the truth. Uh, it's a dangerous, danger. The Jews, what he's reading over here, the Jews, and that that was was uh, was a thinking that, uh, and, and I don't want to get off on this. But I'll just the way according to these scriptures right here that the Jews was God's people. And he's telling them right there that the Jews didn't want to hear what Paul was saying, and he went on. And he said, "Well, that's." Uh, let me look for it. Said uh, uh, be it, verse twenty eight says, "Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. If you don't want it, praise God, He'll give it to somebody else. Amen. Uh, if you don't want it, I'll take it. You keep going around and, and playing games with this carnal minded junk, and, and, and you're going to get passed by. Uh, and, and I'll just uh, carnal mindedness is." Uh, it, 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 it goes right along with the flesh. And this flesh, I know, gets weak and, and our minds get weak and, 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 and all such like that. But, uh, our God, the Spirit of God is powerful enough to wake you up and smack you across the face at least every once in a while, is it not? To say, this is foolishness. What are you thinking like that, boy? Why do you care what your neighbors are doing? Why, how is that going to affect your salvation? Why do you care? Why do you care uh, what so and so said? You, you, uh, all this stuff, and I've said it before. If uh, we could go to worshiping God, if if if, if we get rid of some of this stuff, uh, I'll just be honest with you. I, I don't. I, life's pretty good right now. I don't have any problems. Necessarily, but one one reason I didn't worship God this morning when it was getting so good, my mind was somewhere else. Total right. mindedness. I had things on my mind, things that wasn't didn't have a thing to do with this church, a thing to do with the meetings. So it just my mind was a wandering. Come on, boy. That's why I didn't take part in it this morning. Tell why didn't you take part in it this morning? I say, well, I don't have problems. Dave said we had problems. Dave said if you want peace. If you need help this morning, every single second of the day we need help. Amen. Every single second of the day we need peace from God. Amen. And nobody, nobody won't. I, 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 well, I didn't get up there either. You say, well, he's a preaching on marriage and stuff. If I got up there, people think we are having problems. Every one of us this marriage should have been up here praying for God to help us. What's it going to hurt? Yeah, exactly what I said. You'd afraid somebody thinks something's wrong when you're married if you come up. Yeah. You know the Bible said we could pray ahead. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 
How many times have you ever prayed that God would fix things that had never happened? Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you ever prayed that God would take care of your kids in the school yeah. all day long? Yeah. How many times have you prayed that God would take care of your wife and go to work and get her back home safe? Yeah. Yeah. How many times, amen, have you ever prayed the blessings down on your family or do you just take it for granted? Yeah, go ahead. That God will give it no matter what. The Bible said I can pray a blessing or a cursing down yeah. on my kids. Did right. you know that? Yeah. I thought about it, Jeff, whenever Kayla went into labor. I worried about her because she's got a place in her back that's given her trouble for years. Nerves touch and her legs go numb. And you know, having a baby could have paralyzed my daughter for the rest of her life. I waited out and I prayed about it way before it come time to go into labor. And I told my wife, I do not want them to induce labor on this child. I want her to go naturally. I want God to bring this baby into the world. And when her water broke, Jeff, on Saturday morning, I thought I was going to just shout the victory. And I just... Got ready, went on to the hospital, sat there in life with her all day, and amen. And they said, us, I done prayed about it. Yeah. One night I told my wife, she's getting nervous in the truck. We sat in the truck. I said, Don't you believe God? She said, Yeah. I said, Don't you trust God? She said, Yeah. I said, Well, it's going to be okay. God said it, I believe. She went into labor, started dialing. She went from a man up to about a three, and the next time we checked her, she's nine and a half. The baby is getting ready to come. Yeah. Her still alive and carrying on. Her and Kelsey. We went out of the room at twenty-eight or four. The doctor come in. Don't know how long it took them to get ready, but at twelve minutes after five, they little baby, a man, Lord Bell was born. My young is still alive. Yeah, yeah. Now you tell me, God didn't pray. Yeah. I didn't pray down a blessing upon my family. Uh -huh. Can I get an amen? And say, preacher, you think you're something? You better believe I'm something. Yeah, I am a child of a living God, yeah. and He said, if I believe Him, and what? Carnal-minded is when you read the Word of God and God tells you you're wrong and you keep doing it. Uh, yeah, See, right. you don't believe a book. It's a reader's digest to you. Yeah. Come on! Winston Salem Journal. They read it. They look at it. And when God says you're wrong and keep doing it, that tells me you don't believe God. Amen. You know what the true believers are doing? They're searching out a righteous life. Yeah. They're searching. They're taking the Word of God and applying it in their life. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on! <laughs> How much power do you want? Yeah. So I don't need no much, much power preacher. You're the one that needs fire. Sure I do. And I'm going to get every ounce I can get. I pray to God every time I preach it, it electrocutes you. I don't say you're a nut. I pray every time I preach it, jerk you from out of the bench, Jim. Amen. That's how kind of power I want. And you don't get that phrase, God living like the world lives. Amen. God says not to lie, and you don't quit lying, you're carnal minded. It's dead. So God says quit stealing, quit backbiting, quit, amen, cussing, and you keep cussing, amen, you're carnal minded. You didn't believe God. Amen. You never took one thing of God serious. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. But whenever, praise God, it comes down to the nitty gritty and you really need something and you want it more than life itself, you'll come to the terms. And you know what I found out in life, and I found this out the hard way. You can't read the Word of God yeah. to prove somebody wrong. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. You can't take the Word of God and prove people wrong with it. God will not bless you. Amen. You can't take it, amen, and put people on the spot with it. God will bless you. Amen. There's a time in my life right now I was searching out some Scripture. I was going to prove some preachers wrong. God wouldn't give it to me. Couldn't understand nothing. And then when I finally got down to the place that I prayed that God would let me know the truth no matter what, yeah. it started coming. Amen? 
You see, I don't have to prove people wrong. The Bible said, let God be truth and every man a liar. Can I get an amen? amen? The Bible said that this Word will stand when the world's on fire. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, I don't have to prove you wrong. If you're out of the book, you're already wrong. Can I get an amen? All i got to do is tell you the truth. Amen. You want this blessed book built for? Made for? Written down for? To edify and to upbuild the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. So I don't understand the thing is, why don't you? Do you believe? Do you trust? Do you believe? Amen. You know what I believe this morning? I believe this is all my heart. And I, I don't care what nobody else says. People say there's parts of this book. I know preachers that says that the book of James ought to be tore out. Well, um, I'll just be honest with you. A man that tear out the book of James ought to tear out the third chapter of John. Amen. 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 Oh, come on now. Amen. Come on. Amen. It's still the Word of God. Amen. That's like ripping the right arm off of Jesus Amen. and saying He's still your God. Amen. Amen. To tell me that a God that's able to save me ain't able to heal me. Can I get an amen? Say, so, preacher, you've been down your back for two weeks. Sure I have. Amen. And I'm trying to be patient, amen, and wait on God to heal it. Yeah. Amen. Praise God, amen. I even got stupid the other day and got out on the tractor and messed it up worse than it was to start with. Got to get an amen. Come on, listen to me. Just because I've got a man, I, I slipped this, don't mean God is available. I, can I get an amen? I, I know a God that can reach down and push it back in place, but He's got me in a place I, where He can use me. I, and praise God, I'm going to stay right here and sit down until God gets done with it. Amen. 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 Bless Him. Lo and behold, I'm back at Wilkes of Witnessing. Woo! <laughs> yeah. You know what I believe? I believe this is the Holy Word of God. Yes. Amen. And it was written down by devout men moved by the Spirit of God. I believe it's the truth. I believe it's ever settled in glory. I believe from cover to cover may not understand it all, but I still believe it's the Word of God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Huh? I believe this to be the truth. Over anything your grandma, grandpa, anybody in your life will tell you, this is the truth. Come on. And I believe as long as I'm walking in the lids of this book, I am right and I'm not wrong. Can I get an amen? Somebody, come on. Come on now. God didn't say you had to know it all. You know what He said over there? I'm going to hush. He said, Behold, we see our face in a glass darkly. We know in part, we prophesy in part. But He said, when that which is perfect shall appear, that which is in part shall be done away with. Amen. We're just scratching the surface of it now. Amen. That's the reason you read in the Word of God, I have not seen, ear, not heard, nor entered into the hearts of man what God has got in store Amen. for them that love Him. Right. Woo! i got just enough to believe. Amen. Amen. Amen, but then. I'm still holding on to the promise God made you. It's getting closer and closer and closer. It might be right before the hour that the Lord comes, but it's still a promise. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on, say, preacher, you're a nut. I've been crazy about a lot of things, but this is the first time I've been crazy about something that's right. Come, come on. Come on. Come on. People can't help people. I thought about this thing. People in the church, amen, saying they're going to win somebody to the Lord and you're living like hell, you ain't going to win nobody to the Lord. Don't play games. Huh? Come on. That's like going deer hunting with no bullets. <laughs> huh? Come on. Come on. Huh? That's like going deer hunting. You don't even you, you put your scope on, you never look through it until you go hunt. You don't know where a bullet's going. Huh? You can't be 
be a witness to God unless you're right with God. Unless you believe God. Say, preacher, do I have to believe it all? Every word. From cover to cover. You've got to believe it. Amen. Say, preacher, I don't know how to believe in nothing that I don't understand. Understand this. That this is God's Word. Amen. Ain't that enough? Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. People ask me, where, amen, uh, oh, Cain Abel's wives come from? Where Lot's wives come from? Yeah. Where all these people came from? Adam and Eve was the only two people in this world, preacher, in the beginning. Where did all these other people come from? Ain't you read, amen, in John, first chapter of John? He said all things were made by Him and without Him nothing was made. Can I get an amen? If there's anybody born in that country, God made them. If you want to know where it come from, God give it. Can I get an amen? Praise be to God. Say, hey, what about the dinosaurs? These evidence is here. And the Bible said, no, amen. Oh, Lord. Oh, and I said, they in the land. Can I get an amen? Woo! It's good enough for me. You know what the Bible said? To abstain from foolish questions. They gender more strife. Amen. You go to question and doubt in God's word, the first thing you know, you're doubting salvation. Amen. They try to pull that junk on me all the time. They the fellow run out on me. We was working, me and my dad was working down birds. Well, this is a big old religious fellow. He bounced out of the house. He told me, he said, I wouldn't have a preacher to preach at my church that couldn't quote cover to cover. I just walked up. I thought, my God, you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> I didn't know over my head. I might as well go on because I can't preach at your church. I'm lucky to preach to quote John 3.16 if God ain't in it. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. Right. Then you come off with these questions. You want some Bible questions. You, you ever notice people think they're smarter than you are? Huh? They know more than you do. Oh, I'm something because I... I know somebody's name, you know. So this part just runs off to me. He said, pretty sure I have a question for you. So there's four people in the Lord of God. Two is never born and two never died. Who was they? I started moving on. He got mad at me. Huh? I didn't say I hadn't read the book, she. I just said I couldn't quote it from cover to cover. Yeah, Can't get anything made. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. We got people in this world today that's just dying to prove somebody wrong or belittle somebody yeah. or make them look like they don't know nothing. Yeah. Can I tell you what you need to know first and foremost? The Bible said there's a name under heaven. For by me must be saved. And there's no other name according to the Word of God. No other name under heaven. Whereby men must be saved. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Not to prove how little you are, but to prove just how much do you know. Does anybody know that name that I'm talking about? Amen. In name Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. He's the one who wrote the book. He is the book. Woo, from cover to cover. Now let, let me enlighten you in some things. These people that's prided themselves in studying the Word of God and memorizing it, and they've got a, a mind that's like a steel trap. Nothing leaves. They, 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 they can remember the Word of God, cover to cover, quote, chapter, verse, never open their Bible. But they're lacking one thing. The Spirit of God. Yeah, amen. Amen. And without that, without the anointment of God, it's not the gospel. Amen. Amen. 
You know people's sister sits in the house of God year after year after year and they've never figured out what the gospel is. So I mean, you know, man, I'm just saying, I love you. I'm going to hush. I, I'm just going to enjoy. I'm going to enjoy no pain for about an hour. I go back home and hurt me. Hey, man, let me tell you something. God's good to me. God's good to me. God's good to me. I feel so good I can't hardly stand it. I say, preacher, you're a nut. I got victory. I believe it, Jerry. I believe it. I believe that I've got a God that's able to heal me. I believe I've got a God that's able to take care of me. If you're going down and read it over there and, and where you started from, amen, it goes on to say that the sufferings of this world is not to even be compared with the glory it shall be revealed in us. Sometimes suffering is what makes us the men and women that we are and you don't even know it. Huh? God's making you something that He can be proud of. And we don't even know it. You tell me how much of this world we need. Anybody figure out something that you need? Really need? There's a lot of things we want. There's very little we need. Actually, all we need is more of the Spirit, more of the Word of God, Jim. Does God ever speak to you? Let me ask you this. Does God ever speak to you? Say, well, I don't know. Why don't you know? He said, my... Sheep know my voice. Amen. And a stranger they will not follow. Amen. I ain't saying I always listen. I ain't saying I ain't always running my mouth when the Lord's speaking and I don't hear it. When I get quiet, God begins to speak to you, no doubt in my mind who it is. When God rolls me out of shape to you. He says, Son, I'm going to show you something. You'll get you by. Open it to this, this, and this. And I go back to bed and I don't fully understand. I say, God, I, I don't know. I've heard these preachers preach. Don't worry about what they preach. He said, I want to show you something. I was going to hit a lick. Um, <laughs> On Schofield our Wednesday night, and I couldn't get his name out. <laughs> See, when I first got saved, I got me a Schofield Bible. And you know what happens? The commentary. He started taking over the Word of God. And I got to where, that's the reason they come up with these new Bibles, you see. You read what man's put in their own word, and you think that's easier to understand. So I got to read what Schofield thought about the scripture that I was reading. And I'd read it, and, I, and, and God said, Now, son, let me show you something. He said, Do you believe? I said, Lord, you know I believe. He said, Go over to the 17th chapter of Luke. He said, I've showed you this scripture. You know the truth. And when I went to read it, and got on the commentary and I realized just how carnal minded that this man had written in this book was. I got rid of that thing. So that's a discourage. No, no. I got me a book. I got me a book that ain't got the thoughts of man in it. All it is is a reference Bible. And you know what that is? That's a Bible that'll help you search out the Scriptures. Amen. Not what man thinks. And you know what? I began to study and God began to show me. And praise God, I ain't a giving her up. I don't care. Amen. You know whatever you want to. I'm going to believe God. And the only way you'll ever see the hidden mysteries of God is to believe it for the truth. Amen. And when God brings it down to you and you see something in your life, you need to move move it and move it up to the Word. Amen. And the first thing you know, God's going to... You know what the Bible said? The more that's known, the more knowledge you have, the more that's going to be required of you. Yeah. Amen. 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 
If you know not, if you know that God said it's a, it's a sin to lie, if you know the sin command, the Ten Commandments, and you keep up breaking them, hmm? come on now. Come on. You don't believe the book. Sin of unbelief. You don't know why God ain't listening, God ain't a blessing, and God ain't a helping you. It's because you don't believe. If I truly believe that lying is a sin, I quit lying. If I truly believe that doping is a sin, I quit doping. Huh? If if I believe that cheating on my wife is a sin, I wouldn't be cheating on my wife. Come on! Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Look at the commandments. Have you ever really studied these commandments out? You know what Jesus said? If you love me. If you love me. Now all he asked me, Jim, was, if you love me, keep my commandments. We're 2018, preacher. He also read where he said, my commandments are not grievous. Amen. Amen. And I also read, you now this will put you in perspective. They that say they love me and keep them not my commandments are a liar. And the truth is not in it. Well, that's a pretty calm question. That ain't brother man. You see, if you're going to see it, you've got to believe it. You know, Lester, I, I will say this with utmost respect to you. You have been a light and an inspiration to this preacher. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know why I've got so much confidence in you? Not respect, but confidence in you. It's because when your wife left you, you searched the Word of God. Bless him, Not only did you search it, but you believed it. Yeah. Lived by yourself a many a year. And you know why? Because the office of a day yeah. was more important than companionship. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! The blessings of God was more important. Amen. The companionship. Can I get an amen? Hey! I like to sit and work with a man and serve with a man and believe the Word of God to be true. Can I get an amen? Glory! And I'm honored to serve with you. Yes. Amen. Amen, Jerry. I'm gonna hug. I'm gonna try to hug. I feel good. I don't know about everybody else. Amen. 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 What are you gonna do with it? Carnal mind. <clears throat> Carnal minded is whenever you read the word of God and God tells you you're wrong and you try to find every excuse to make it right. Amen. Amen. Carnal minded. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Carnal minded is when you go down the road and, you, and people say, well, now you go up our old day laws here. I don't agree with what he's preaching. You say, well, I don't either. Yeah, bless him, Lord. You're carnal minded. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Hey. Yeah, old Jerry, he talked pretty good today, but I don't believe everything he's sick. Carnal minded. Bless him, Lord. Carnal minded. So I know God helps somebody else, but I don't know if He can help me. Carnal minded. God has no respect to the person. He'll do for you just what He does for me. Amen. You went through the back problem. Brother Tony, I seen God to heal Brother Tony other right here in this church. Amen. Come on, I'm telling the truth. Now it's my turn to have back problems. Never had it before. It's hard to get used to. But the healings are coming. Huh? Why not me? I ask my, uh, why not me? Why would I pray it off on Thomas? I believe I'll just bury it for a while. I got to come to church today. Got to preach a little. I'm happy. I'm going to hug. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, they might. Uh, you got you got to be careful. Uh, these, uh, this verse right here, verse two, First Corinthians, I read. I fed you with milk, and not with meat, for here before you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. And I've taught on that before, and, and and what I read there in the the book of Acts, uh, him uh, Jesus quoted the same scripture over the book of Matthew. Uh, Says it, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he quoted them the same scriptures and uh, quoted the book of Isaiah, is what that's a quote right there. And, and I, I tell you, just because you got eyes and, and ears and, and, and you're sitting in the church on Sunday morning, uh, that don't mean a thing. If you ain't a hearing, like I said, uh, it's important to, to know that you can see and hear with your spiritual ears and eyes. And if you don't even know what that means, I I, I don't I don't know I, I don't know how to explain that to you. If, if uh, you know, it's like an old it, preacher it, was a preacher. It said the theologian said that the book of Job was written just to show us what had happened, and, and he wasn't a real man. <laughs> but that old man got my attention when he went to preach. Yeah. He said, I might agree with that. I might agree with that if you've got the authority to change God's Word. So he opened the book and he began to read and this is what it said. There was a man. Not it was a story written. There was a man. Now do you believe in your heart that there was a man? Amen. 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 you believe there was a man named Noah that built an ark that floated. Eight souls were saved. Do you believe there's a man called Lot that was carried out of Sodom and Gomorrah by the angels of God? Do you believe that there was three men that was cast into the furnace that wasn't Do you believe that there was a man, a man that was cast into a den of lions because he wouldn't bow down to the things of the king? Do you believe that, brother? That man times a day uh, to the same God that I serve. Uh, yeah. Get an amen. Uh, and sent an angel by night and closed the mouth of the lion. Yeah. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 You believe that there was a man named Peter amen. that was crucified upside down? Yeah. Do you believe there's a man that preached the gospel named John that was beheaded for telling the truth? Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe in a man that walked up Calvary's mountain? Yeah, Lord. And carried a cross. Yeah. Can you see when they began to read the Christmas story? The mother Mary that's holding the baby Jesus. Her firstborn in a man and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. She didn't have a man, the flush blankets that you have today, but that baby was wrapped in the rags that they wiped the donkeys and the horses and the camels with and laid him in an old lonely manger. Hey man, do you believe that? I can see the baby, amen. Amen, I can see the wise men are coming from afar. Amen, following that star. That was a standing right over Bethlehem. Amen, I saw him coming for him. I even saw Simeon, amen, in the Word of God. Do you believe that man existed? Amen, and prayed God, prayed he wouldn't die till he saw the salvation of the Lord. Amen, when he, hey, saw Jesus. Do you believe in John the forerunner? Do you believe he baptized Jesus? Amen. Can I get an amen? Do you believe in that man that hung on the cross of Calvary was taken down and put in the barry tomb for three days? Do you believe he existed? Amen. I believe he's still alive today. Amen. I believe he's still alive today. You see, it's no problem for me to see it. Because I believe. And I believe my eyes were open. Amen. That's right. It's not a story. You know what this book is? This is not a story book. That's right. That's right. Can I tell you what this is? This is documentation. Amen. Yeah. Of facts. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say that again? Amen. This is a documentation of facts. Amen. That really happened. Of real people. Of a real God. Of a real Savior that lives and reigns today. That's what this is. 
I'm going to Praise God. You don't even want to get me started on what I believe. Amen, bro. Can you see that? <coughs> Brother Lester began to talk the other night and he began to tell about a survey that was taken in the United States in the Bible Belt. They done a survey several years ago about the time I started preaching, maybe five years later or something. And they took a survey of preachers that stood in the pulpit in the Bible Belt of America. They took a hundred preachers out of the pulpits and asked them a question. How many of them believe that this is the Word of God and it forever settled? How many truly believe that this is real? There was only 20 out of 100 that believed that this was the true Word of God that they spoke of every Sunday morning. That left eight false prophets. That ain't a myth, that ain't a story that happened. So if that was, I preached for about 24 years, I've lost track of it, I don't even know how long I have been preaching. About 24 years, I think. So in the last 19 years, Jeff, how many have been taught false doctrines? And how many thinks it's just a book and they truly don't believe it's real? You know what Joshua said in the Word of God? And, and, and yes, Joshua was a, a real man. Amen. He said, Choose you this day in whom you'll serve us. For me and my house will serve the Lord. And they said, We'll serve God. And he said, You can't. God's a righteous God. Amen. And he went on down to the end of the saying there in the Word of God. And he told them, He said, All right. All right. Your life will be a witness against you and to whom you serve. Your lifestyle, your life you live every day is a witness to what you believe. Did I say that right? Amen. I can preach it from cover to cover and if I ain't living it, I ain't according to the Word of God. God said if you're going to preach it, to live it. You want to get our people saved? The truth, the fire of God. He'll get you there. Not stories. You say, I believe this is going to be true. And I believe every word of it. I believe everything that God wrote down. I believe in what happened. I believe David is a real man. I believe that Goliath is real. I believe the stone that he threw, Jeff, was in that brook, just like God Amen. said. Amen. He didn't find it in the road because the rocks in the road are jagged. And the ones he picked up were smooth. Amen. They'd been anointed with the water of God. Amen. Amen. That's really it hits its mark. Can't miss with God. I'm gonna hug you. God, I ain't what I can say. But you'll never convince me that this is not real. See too much evidence of it. Too much evidence. Face four eighty. On the resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Sown in weakness, raised in power, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body. Praise
thank you for what we've already felt this morning in your house. Sweet Holy Spirit, well, put that down deep within our souls. Lord, I pray that you bless everyone that's here. Lord, bless the offering that was taken up. Bless everyone that had to give. Bless the ones that didn't have to give. Lord, bless the ones that's not able to be your kind of sickness. God, I pray that you bless and touch them. God, I pray, Lord, that you meet each and every need here today. God, I pray for all the lost in the community, Lord. I pray that everyone would leave here more equipped than where they come in this morning. Lord, have a desire in their heart to be a testimony, be a witness for all the lost. Lord, we know there's many things to be saved. Lord, just have your will in your way and remain with your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know no announcements are. Unless you got anything. Any birthdays and anniversaries. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to people that's in need. Amen. And if you can, it'd be a great thing to help. Uh, it's, uh, pray about it.
Anybody else got a song? <laughs> Yeah. Oh. 
Y'all pray just a few minutes. There's been enough spirit here this morning to save the world if they wanted to be saved. I was sitting here and God said to read this scripture. I don't know why. But this is what He said to read. This morning, if you're here this morning and you back sit on God or you just you ain't satisfied. You know, sometimes it's not that I've backslidden, it's just that I'm not satisfied. Or I'm at. And that's when I'm in need. You're here this morning, you're lost without God, or you've never been saved, and you want to be saved. You know, Thomas, I believe there's people in this world that wants to be saved, and they just haven't had an opportunity. Amen. They need a door that's open to but I've got two places I want to read and nothing else. I'll read it and sit down. We'd like for you to go ahead and get you a song this morning. I, I just I feel like I need to read this. Very familiar scripture. You can find it in Romans 10, starting with verse 8. God put this on my mind while we were singing, while the sister was singing. I just went ahead and opened the Bible and put me a marker there so I could read it. You see, if I'm not going to mind the Spirit, there's no use in me asking you to. I want to read a few verses in Romans 10, and then I want to go to Revelation and read one verse. And you pray just a few minutes, and this morning, if you're here and things ain't just exactly right in your life, and you've been a wandering, I, this is for you. The Spirit's touched this morning. I, I've seen God move. I've seen Him touch. And I know He's not going to quit. And I believe we're living in the last moments of time. I believe the last calls are going out. And I believe there's people you know that, that really want to do better. Amen? Apostle Paul said he knew to do good, but how to perform it. Sometimes we're not so good, are we? We want to do better. We want to do good. And sometimes how to get it done is a mystery. But you pray just a minute, and I want you to listen real close, because I don't know if I'm going to preach. God just said to read it. I want you to listen and ponder it in your heart. In the 8th verse, 10th chapter of the book of Romans, it reads like this. But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The Bible said that God give every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl a measure of faith. And you know why He done that? He done that because without faith it's impossible to please God. And faith without works is dead. God gave you enough faith to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ if you'll only exercise that faith. The Bible said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen? 
If you'll confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in, can you believe in your heart? Like I preached this morning, that there is a literal man, the Son of God, that died on the cross of Calvary for your sin and mine, and was buried three days in a barred tomb. And God sent an angel to roll a stone away. Can you believe that story? Can you believe that God raised Him from the dead on the third and glorious morning that Jesus Christ got up for me and you? If you can believe that and call on His name, you can be saved this morning. That's the Word of God. Come on. Why, glory? I can feel that. People think it's a hard thing to get right with God. No, it ain't. It's getting your heart right. Hey man, God's done made the, the work's been done on Calvary. Hey man, what you got to do is come and dedicate your life to God. Can I get an amen? You see, if you believe faith, believe it, you want to live for Him, you want to give your life to Him. I tell everybody, bow down and pray. Call on Him. Why He's here. Tell Him what you need. If you need save Him, ask Him to come into your heart and be your Savior. And He will. Amen. 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 I, I don't want to preach. I just want to read deep. He said, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. And He said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. You're no different than I was. Come on. I heard them testify in the revival meeting up there this week. Amen. And they began to testify that they had never drunk a drop, never smoked no dope, Never done nothing, amen, that they thought was wrong, but they were still lost. Amen. amen. The Jews and the Greek, there's no difference in them. God had no respect for a person. That who He's rich to whoever calls on His name, Jeff. It all boils down to the finished works has been done, and it's all boils down, lays in mine in your lap. Do we want it? If you want it, you've been a desire, you've been pondering on it, been a wondering how it feels to be saved. You have that this morning. For the Bible said in Revelation, I, Amen, over here in the 22nd chapter in the 17th verse, He said, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Can I get an amen? Amen. The Bible said over there in the Word of God, They call ye come and buy without money and without price. Can I get an amen? Honey, let me tell you something. You've been wondering about and thirsty for the things of God. The Bible said they did hunger and thirst for the Hey, the righteousness shall be filled. Get your song. I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna try my best not to go any farther, not to do anything. God said to read this and give you an opportunity. Whatever you need, if you're thirsty for the things of God, hungry for a meal from God's table. If you've been a wonder, just how good it feels. Amen. To have the peace in your soul that surpasses all understanding. If you're thirsty, amen, come and drink. Can you get an amen, preacher? It ain't a hard thing to get saved. It's a hard thing, amen, to step out and to, amen, deny the pride of this old flesh and get right with God. That's the only thing that we need. An opportunity to sing. Sing this morning. Listen. Come on. Had no peace. Come on. But Jesus came and made me glad. Come on. Why his brothers are praying? Would there be somebody else? Need a little help this morning. Would you be honest? Hey! He said He's rich to all that called upon Him. It don't matter what you need. It matters who you go to to get help. Come on this morning. My God. Come on. He makes me glad. He makes me glad. When I am sad. Come on. Just step 
come on. Not now. Hell of devil. He brought me enough. Thank God, Christ Jesus. Yes. Turn them out how good it is. Now, come on. The prodigal son comes in his house. And he looked back toward the father's house. And you know what he said? He said, I remember the father's house. Now, the servants had more than Feel heaven. I don't know about everybody else. Come on this morning. Come on this morning. You know, I always thought that we placed a little church up the road before I got saved. That my wife would beg me to go to church with her. Send a preacher to tell me how good heaven is and how good God was. Come on. Oh, I tell you. You know. You ever watch TV? I know you got kids. You got to watch these animated Hey Amen. I even got to where I watch them when I'm on the set. And they'll have me say, I ain't afraid. Huh? I'm awesome. Every once in a while, Jeff, you'll see it. One of them will have a magic wand. And whatever the buddy needs, Amen? You know, sometimes I, I'm just like a little kid. I like traveling with magic wand. If I'd hit you with a stick, you'd think it's me done. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If I lead you to the man, it's got the power. That same man when he was pregnant fell all alone. He thought all hope was gone. The devil said, my body looks. You messed up. Boy, wasn't he a liar. Amen. Amen. When you hold this little baby, she looked at me there, man, to go and grin and look at me so solid. You see, this ain't a mistake. Amen. God don't make mistakes. Amen. Amen. You might not understand it. God don't make mistakes. 
God hadn't wanted her to be born, she wouldn't be born. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. And you know what you found out? Even though you're failed, God still loves you. He supplied every need, didn't He? He ain't done with you either. I'm going to hug you. You see, God doesn't know what you need. You have exactly what you need. You know, you go looking for stuff for it. You can get on the internet. You can go to the stores of this world. And, you know, you might have to compromise. You can find all kinds of stuff. It might, it might be just exactly what you want, but it's close. You see, that's compromise. I told them in this church one time when you pray, pray specific what you want. Yeah, right. If you're praying for a new car and you need a new car, pray for the color you want. What color you want? You say, well, preacher, that's asking too much. Why? Amen. Don't you think that you serve a God that knows the difference in the colors? Amen. Huh? Amen. And if I believed that God was going to send me a new truck, I wouldn't just settle for anything. I'd want the color I want. Can you get an amen? amen? Do you trust a God like that? Amen. I preached about it once before, and the Sunday school teacher began to stand up in this congregation and, amen, testify about how he wanted him a stove like Jeff Ashley. Amen. amen. He got in the, can I tell you? He got in the paper and he, he was one for sale and when he got there somebody done bought it. Boy, what'd that do for him? Gosh, I thought God wasn't in it. He kept believing God. God sent him to a fellow's house and had a stove in the basement hooked up and using it. I don't remember the amount, but he began to tell how much money he had, and that's all he had. And so the guy said uh, he had a stove he'd sell him, and he went in, and he's hooked up and using it. Jerry thought, well, that can't be the stuff. It's just what I'm walking, but that can't be it. He's using it. He unhooked it, didn't he? It's at your house, ain't it? Is it exactly what you prayed for? It didn't come out of second-hand news. God had somebody in the basement of you that you know didn't work because you unhooked it. Can I get an amen? Somebody say amen. amen. Do you believe what I'm preaching? Amen. God answers in living color. Whatever you need. Amen. <laughs> now, sister, I read what you wrote. <laughs> and I know that you've been a praise. I ain't gonna I'm just glad God blessed you with what you want. Okay? You see, God even works if you need a companion, if you've been searching for somebody your whole life. Amen. Pray me unto God. Amen. He wouldn't be what I'd learn. The praise God said for him exactly what you've been looking for. And I can't amen. I'm to get here. But he's here. He praise God. Can I get an amen? Glory to God. You see, the problem is people ain't willing to wait. That's right. See, when she married into this month, she's going to get a whole lot worse than this. <laughs> I ain't gonna treat you no different than I treat the rest of you. I love you. I told BJ the other night, I said, You are crazy. Run back there and ask her to marry me. I said, Didn't you know she could have said no? <laughs> Do you know what I believe? I believe you know the answer before you ever asked. I thank God for BJ. Amen. I can say that honestly. Amen. I love you, sir. And my prayer is that God would swoop down in your life and do something for you. Amen. Amen. He's going to be a light to these people. He's going to be a light to a lot of things. And when God goes to using Him, 
Oh, Lord. I'm going to hope. We'll give us a song with fellowship. If you need to pray this morning. Now I want you to know something. I'm not a preacher that's full of gloom and doom. I ain't going to come in the house of God and look like a, a, a donkey eating green briars. Praise God. I'm happy to be saved. I believe you ought to have fun when you come to the house of God. And people say you ought to joke, you ought to laugh and carry on. Praise be unto God. I was in a meeting one time when everybody in the congregation got drunk in the Holy Ghost and they liked to their side, sir. They made a man. Everybody would be like that. They say, preacher, you lost your mind. Hey, Joel, a victory. You was in that mix, man. Hey, man. I believe I was the same meeting them boys come in drunk in the tent. I, we were preaching and that one jumped up and screamed. He said, you scared me to death. And y'all were wrong. <laughs> hey, man. I would have been saved this for a while. They could have got drunk in the Holy Ghost because you got right with y'all and say, pretty good. Right. You don't see us yet. No idea. You don't know. Man, I love it. I pray to God, God, come down to Pleasant Chapel Church. And I hope this goes out over the airways. I'll say this pretty clear right in front of everybody. Hey, man, he's on YouTube. I pray to God that God would come down in Pleasant Chapel Church. That everybody in this congregation get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can I get an amen? Come on. That you can experience something with God. Can we hold this over here so you can say amen? <laughs> I'm going to have to get you a song. Praise God, I'm happy. <laughs>